Well, we're here for appraisals and fun at the Antique Fest, and I had a bunch of people this morning, but I've got a little bit of a break, so I'm gonna to try to show you quickly a little bit of what's going on. Well, this is a great day to have a good day, but as you can see over there, with the fellow draining his tent, we have rain. Now, I know everyone says it rains in Washington all the time, but it never rains in the first weekend in August. The thing is, Washingtonians are used to rain and we haven't had any for almost a month, so they are not shy about coming out in it anyway. We are gonna be busy, busy, busy. Of course, if you just stay in and look at the stuff, you'll stay plenty dry. I always like the all steel kitchens and this is one from about 1940. There's some neat uranium glass. The mugs in particular are something unusual, those big mugs with the handles there. You don't see those often. I'm a pepper. That was Dr. Pepper's slogan, oh gosh, I think about yeah, early 80s. And I have some viewers who are peppers, so I thought they might enjoy seeing that. I am down at one end of Pine Street next to Posey Boutique. She does a lot of flannel. We are in the Northwest after all. She's also got a really great price on that table. Take me home. I mean, my goodness, $20. That's great. And 35 on the milk cans. The train case or the valise there with the mirror is 18. So she's got some good prices. It's Sunday, so, you know, we've got some people motivated to make some sales before they go. This gal's got some really fun pottery. I like the Royal Copley with the fish. Very pretty color here with the McCoy. This is a neat piece with the beads down the edge. I always like the Harker cameo, and those are great prices. The Texas Ware bowls are cool with the spattering. She does have really fun things, and I have to say, I think this is a lot in line with the types of things that I see people collecting now. I like the Brown's glasses. I've always been a fan of these, actually. These are CS to wear. They also did those jacketed ones with the tiki designs on them in the same time. There's a different switch plate. You know, switch plates are something that might be something interesting to collect and put over uh, in various different ones in different rooms of the houses. That'd be nice for uh, your kitchen, wouldn't it? That's Red Wing. Yeah, I like the Red Wing. I always like the uh, all over floral patterns. And then these are cute. These are the square dancers. And they're only $3 each. It's a great price. This is from about 1960. I have a friend who's a square dancer. That might be for him. Antique Fest happens the first weekend of every August, and it's been going for a while. It fills a couple of blocks with vendors, and then the antique malls in town all have sales. So by the time you add it all up, there's about 400 dealers participating. This gal, I showed some of her stuff, but what I think is really neat over here that I wish I had a place for, because it's definitely my style, are these with the bark cloth pads. But they are really cool. I really like the style and the bark cloth you picked is really great. <laughs> yeah, they're Frankel, you knew that, right? Yeah, they are Paul Frankel, yes. They're just wonderful. And actually, somebody antiqued them at some point, didn't they? You know, I think so, yeah. I cleaned them up a little bit. I just boiled them. They're cool. It's, I, I do tiki and bamboo and um, it's all in Florida or else I'd have to have them. I don't know how I'd get them there. A few years ago, old painter's drop cloths started to be collectible, and the holier the better, and the more patched and more painted the better, because people were using them as props for things, and these folks are using it as a table covering, and I have to say, for a whole bunch of rustic stuff, it's actually a great look. And they do have some pretty cool things. I've been staring at this from my position at the end of the aisle, and it's security food since 1900. Milk saving food. This is something from the 1950s, but basically what they're doing is they're making things that your poultry, your cows, and your pigs can eat in case there is not other food available, like during inclement weather. I like this guy. Is that the Lone Ranger? Carnival chalkware pieces were called that because, of course, they were prizes at carnivals in the 1930s and 40s. I like the platinite on this because it's got these interesting rays that somebody did by hand, but then this is also a fired on paint with the ships. This bowl is going to date to sometime in the 1930s. And then these Mexican pieces, these are from the Tlaquepaque area. A lot of these are not lead free, so I would not use them as serving pieces now, but they're great for design. It wasn't until Ken Edwards with the Palomar Company introduced the lead-free glazes to the Mexican potters that you could guarantee that these would be safe to eat from. 
Nice crowd out for a Sunday afternoon. She stripped this down so that you can see everything. And wow, look at all the leaves. $300, that is a lot of table for the price and you could use it in a small space and then open it up into a big space. I really like the shape of the frame on this photo. Franciscan tulip time, I like that pattern very much. That came out in 1974. And it's got the nice Franciscan, the TV label, which actually they quit using shortly after. So this is early production of the tulip time. This has a little mark here of the studio potter. I don't recognize it. It's a heavy piece. The divided grape bowl. Of course, this one is harvest and it says it's got the tailor mark on it, but this is actually a Louisville stoneware piece. I really like the two cubes here, the brass cubes, and I think she had them priced at about 150 the set. I think they'd be great to use as a display in an antique store. They're right out of the 70s, and so you could certainly sell them, but I think that they would make a nice display just the way she has them. And then look what she's done with the insulators. Wow. Five dollars each, but that's a fun way of displaying them on an interestingly shaped table. And it's Sunday, so we got to sport a special high fashion hat. And Excellent. thank you so much. You're welcome. It's thank been you. so fun to meet you, and I'm going to show you if it's okay on camera. And uh, tell us who you are. Uh, I'm Nancy Jean Murray. Yes. And I have a booth in Astoria, Oregon, at Pier 11. Really fun place, 15 vendors, and I'm really happy to be here in Centralia. Oh, I'm glad. Has it been good for you? Yeah, the last couple days were great. Good. Yeah. I'm so glad. That's yeah. great. Well, Astoria is a wonderful town, and I've got to get back down there and film. That is a really cute fireplace chalkware piece. I have not seen that. Does that have a light it behind neat. it? It does. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so too. You offered me 40 for it yesterday and I said, how about 45? And you walked away. <laughs> oh, 45 is a perfectly fine price. I mean, yeah. I've never seen that particular so. one before. So yeah, super cute. It's got, a, you know, a little, a little critter at her feet. Exactly. It's got the cat and the slippers and yeah, it's very 1930s. 1930s. Oh, good to know. Very yeah. cute. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> Oh, and you do have an interesting ice bucket here, too. I don't know why I'm such an ice bucket fan. I, love ice I do, too. And this one. Ah, yes, Irwinware. So, yeah, this looks like about 1980, and even the fake stitching is good. Yeah, right. <laughs> this booth has some cool stuff, and boy, the prices are great. Look at this little Ruby Flash souvenir piece from Susan Tudor, Mrs. Susan Tudor in 1907. This button arch is a pretty popular pattern that we saw this done on. This was all flashed on and then they could etch through it. And so that was the appeal as a souvenir piece back uh, over a hundred years ago. They haven't picked it up yet, but one of the folks who I did an appraisal for yesterday bought this very pretty wicker bedroom set and took some of it home and is coming back for the rest of it today. The thing is, is that these folks mainly are selling jewelry and newer items and stuff, but they use antiques and vintage for props. And look at these great pieces and the great prices on them. The Radio Junior, this is one of these old picture scopes where you would put the piece in the back and it would shine the light through so that you could project a, an image on a wall. This is a cute little old shape for this nice looking old travel case. Cadiz, or Cadiz in Spain. In Kentucky, it's Cadiz, and that's a big antique destination. I'll be back there soon. Let's see what they have down here. Only $10 on the dresser mirror from the 1960s, and it's got magnifying on one side and regular on the other. Oh my. Hello, everybody. <laughs> $25 on the tray. I mean, these are good prices on this. And this guy found a really cool bench with the curved seat. That is neat. <laughs> Lots of furniture this year at Antique Fest. I haven't seen so much of that in the past. I like the oak end tables. They definitely have a modernist feel, but they have that wide oak. If you like oak patterning on furniture, then that would go with other oak pieces you had. And let's see what we have here. I really like the necktie box. This is one of those celluloid from about 1910. It does have a little damage they typically do, but only $35. It's a very sweet piece. And they're getting ready in September. They're going to have the Country Chicks Market 
there's a lot of these sort of country farm market upcycled recycled vintage repurposed mix shows that are happening around the country and this one is right here in Chehalis, the next town to the south of the Southwest Washington Fairgrounds. So you can look for that if you're in the area. This is a neat mantle with the wheat sheaths and then the little gaps on the side for display. And this is a great price. This is another one of these drop front desks made in oak from about 1910. It's got all the fittings. This looks like it could be a Larkin desk, Larkin Soap Company in Buffalo would have these made. And you know, for $150, you've got lots of fittings to put all your little bills and sort things. You have enough room for a laptop computer with strong chains holding it in, and you've got a bookshelf underneath. So it's a really, really practical piece of furniture and a great price. I like their attitude. This is not a museum. Please make offers. And what a cute display this is. I'm always so impressed when dealers who are going to be at a show for just a couple of days are able to put things together and have it look like this. And she's got a great old coverlet here from sometime in the middle Victorian period that she is using to cover the table, which I covet, but it's covering the table. I like this crib here with the toll painting. It's a dough box, it's not a crib. I I understand now that I'm looking at it. You're right. I thought I saw feet underneath it, but no, no, that's just to hold it off the table, of course. And this would be where you would need the dough, and it's let it rest. and let it rest exactly, because then it could rise. I always am curious, like, were they left-handed or right-handed? <laughs> you can kind of tell after a while. Nice old wooden nails. So this is actually a nice old piece. Um, figure sometime in the middle 1800s. Do you know where it came from? I got it out of Virginia. Wow, okay, I was gonna say, it looked like an East Coast piece. Actually, a lot of your stuff, you have a great display and a lot of your stuff are things we don't see here, like the coverlet is something that we don't encounter so much out West. It came out of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yeah, I thought so. That's where I got my last one too. Yeah, oh no, it's a great looking booth. The, the brown is something you don't see often either. The brown color, yeah, yeah, no, I really don't either. I, I typically, you see blues and reds are pretty much what and I see black. most of the time, and black, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, it's got a great design to it. This is only $8. It's a GE clock, and these little tabs were little things you could do to set various alarms, as I recall. I don't know if it tells us anything about it on the back. That's certainly a great color, though. Yes, it's a household timer. There you go. And you would pull for your various times, and then you could plug this in to your stove or some other place. You could actually plug another device into it if you needed it. There's your on switch. That's a pretty neat piece. And I have to say, at $8, that seems awfully cheap. I'm going to see whether it still works. Oh. Only $3 on little Girl Scout canteen. That's a great price. And this is the Zenith tube carrier case. Nice old hooked rug. So it's fun because these folks are finding things that they are able to bring to the Northwest that are not necessarily seen here as often. And it is good to do things that make you the unique person in a show. And I think they've done a very good job. Everything in chest is half off. This is really cute. It's uh, made out of a remnant of an old towel, but that is really sweet with it turned into a bag. That's a good repurposing there. Sometimes things are stained or torn in a way where you wouldn't be able to use it the way it was. This is what happens to your old Scrabble games if you lose the letters. They take them and they make other things out of them. Here we are celebrating all of our local sports teams. And this is why a lot of people are looking for the old Scrabble games. I really like this hat. I've seen people wearing these for about 30 years now and I just really like the uh, fun of it. They're made in India. I like this box. This is something that's handmade, but I like the design that they did on this. Only $8 cute little mottos and silhouettes here. Nice piece of frame lace. This appears to be tatting the way that it's done and all hand done. Torpedo bottle for carbonated beverages. And they've got a little bit of vintage costume jewelry, including this butterfly from the 70s, which I've had several times. It is actually a pretty good seller. I'll have to see what they want for that. This piece here, I think, is Sarah Coventry, if I remember right. Yeah, it's got the mark on the back. It's one of their more large and showy pieces. This is also Sarah and Coventry. It's just a little bit shiny bright in the metal for my taste. Also Sarah Coventry. 
they were home party jewelry, and so if you bought one thing, you probably bought multiples. So do you want to be at the beginning of the show or the end of the show? Well, it kind of depends on what price point you're working in. This is now free. That's a pretty low price point. I just saw one of these in a house, actually, at a, in an estate recently. And gosh, they've got really neat stuff, so at half off, I imagine a lot of this is going to fly, and you can see they're very busy. This is the last hour of the sale. Oh, I really like that leather bag up there. Look at the stitching on that. That's very nicely done. Early 1900s, $45 with the discount. That's a very fine price for that. There's an hour left and people are motivated to sell. Sprouse Ritz. My business partner bought an old Sprouse Ritz store and that's where we started the first Seaside Antique Mall. That place ended up selling a new place opened across the street that is now the Seaside Antique Mall. And I understand it's very good. If you're enjoying this like I am, please do like this video. Please hit thumbs up. Please leave a comment and do subscribe if you haven't before. It does not cost you anything. It's the one thing you're going to get for absolutely free. And we won't send a bunch of junk your way. We'll just let you know when we have future videos coming. We have some interesting characters in town here. I like this little Mexican throw. The bicycle is cool and some of the parts on it are pretty good, especially that rack on the back. That right there is worth a chunk of money. They have make offer on it. This is a woman's bike and unfortunately girls bikes did last a lot better than the men's bikes and so a lot of these end up being parts donors for men's bikes. This one's got lots of nice features. It's got the chrome guardrail. It has the fenders. It's a Hiawatha. It's got its original bike tag on it. So hopefully somebody will preserve it as it is as a girl's bike. Here's a neat thing. Look at this big old cart. You could fill that full of a whole lot of stuff and have a big old party. There is your portable cooler for $200. Neat old galvanized piece. A farm master. Cute little critters from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. You know, people seem to just love this stuff. Once again, vintage linens in this space. And they've done a really smart thing so that they don't get messed up and unfolded and wrecked. They have them all with the measurements so you don't have to take them out to measure. And you just know right away what you're getting. No stains. They've made it easy to shop and easy to keep in order, which is pretty smart. An interesting Japanese screen. This one's priced at $250. And this is unusual because it's not geisha and it's not humans. These are horses. And I really like this. You could certainly see this in some sort of a country environment and it would not necessarily have to be a place that had Asian themed decorating. And screens are pretty useful, you know, if you have a big old great room and it's turning out to be a little too great because someone's working at home now and needs a little bit of privacy, screens like this can afford that without having to build walls and change rooms. There are some neat vendors who have non-antique and vintage things but are really, really well done and handmade. And then there's some folks who have a combination of both. Mork and Mindy puzzles, wow. Sylvester and Tweety. I like this little piece. This is a clutch and it's got the rhinestones in it. It's not lucite. It's just regular plastic, but it is very cute. Heineken beer, this is one of the first big imported beers in the 70s. They made a big deal out of it. This is from about 1981. I'm finally getting down to see my friends in this space. This is a neat old hooked rug. Look at the colors and the design. That's a lot of fun. Green resin grapes. Oh, they have a lot of fun retro stuff in this space, you can tell. And there's a few things I really like. I'm a big fan of this color of Westmoreland frosted glass. I just think that in the satin, I mean, especially outdoors with the natural light, look how that just glows all by itself. You don't need to black light for things to glow sometimes. Oh, I do like the lamp here. Actually, I like both of these lamps. The shade on this one is great, but I've always been a big fan of this color scheme. Yeah, and that one's actually on sale because there's a chip in it. The film art, uh-huh. Are they all? It's got the actual label on it too, which you almost never see. And I'm glad to see that because Filmar did a lot of these novelty lamps that we don't know anything about now. And I've never seen a catalog. And so I'm glad that you pointed out it had their label on it because uh, a lot of people ask me for lamp ID and a lot of times we just don't know. And this is cool because it's Dealey. Dealey is a 
California ceramics company. Look at those big blue eyes. And the Dealey mark is on the bottom. This is one of their later pieces. They were in business in the 40s and 50s primarily, but I believe this is from the early 60s, right before they went out of business. They've got a Haywood Wakefield piece here. It needs a little bit of uh, refinishing, but it's a great piece. And then I am a huge fan of Paisley, and they've got the Culver Red Paisley, which you really don't see much. And it's 75 for the set, and that's probably about right. It's got the double spout here. This piece is neat. I think this is a Raymore. Yes, it's Aldo Londi for Vitosi, and they have that priced at 125 what happened on these? I don't see anything. I'm missing out. Whichever one's broken, it's broke like right at the very bottom. Right at the bottom. It's on this one. Okay. That's too bad because those are really fun. I have never seen these, this style before. There you see she glued it. Well, you did a really good job. I don't think anyone's going to lose too much sleep over that. Oh, and you've got the green version of these geisha. I've always liked these, and I almost never see the green. I usually see the black. I think I finally saw one with the mark. They were done in the late 70s, early 80s. There's the Japan mark. They're just fun, and I like the design. And you've got two that are green, and I'll take them. So there you go, a last-minute sale. <laughs> And if you like this, buying mystery bags online, well, you can come to the show and you can pick up mystery bags too. And who knows? But the Caselli. The Caselli, yes. And I have this price on it, but I was even willing to like take $400 for them. But I'm going to have them set up down at, have you been to the Vintage Vault? I haven't been to the Vintage Vault. Where is that? Okay, North on Tower. It, um, where the old bank used to be with the clock in the window. Oh yes, that's right. Gunny sack dresses, I remember. Someone here in Centralia sold those when they were new and they were really expensive when they were new. Yeah, and they're even more expensive they're now. Wow. I had that, that one, reasonable. I think for 175. 175, the one on the mannequin? Yeah. Yeah. And they're in pristine condition and I sold a, a blouse today though. Ah, that really that's me. really cool. You know, people like to collect watercolor and paint uh, tins, but I have never seen John Nagy's super colossal watercolor paint box before. He looks like he was having a lot of fun. Lots of the Pepsi glasses. They've got some pretty good ones that you don't see as often. Snidely Whiplash. I remember what a horrible villain he was. I, I liked him. <laughs> And here's Casper. This is a little different because the, the blue paint, and that would be something to look up. Sometimes just the paint color of the name can make a big difference in the value of these. So do check into them. Don't just assume, oh, I've seen it and I know what it is. I wish for these folks we had a hotter day, but I am right next to the frozen sweets place, and I have to admit, some of this looks really good. So at the end of the appraisal fair, I think I'll pick one of these up and take it with me. Look at that, chocolate dipped strawberry. Yes, I see the Franciscan. You've got a nice McCoy there. I like this piece though. This is the. It's newer, yeah. But it's the dusty pink version of Old Country Roses, and a lot of people have not seen that before. They've only seen with the white background. Yeah, I got some. I love the barnacle encrusting on this particular buoy. That's what really makes it. That uh, would be fun to have in a seashore display because, uh, you know, it looks real and it is real. It's been underwater a long time. Oh, yes, folks have trucks full, in fact, that you can walk into here. This is great. I love this idea. I want one too. Well, this is great if you're going from market to market and you can set up a thing like this while well, you just open the doors and you're in business. And they have some pretty fun things in here. The Happy Little Train Game is one I don't remember from childhood, but it's definitely that era. Spirograph was one of my favorites, of course. And here we've got the Blushing Willie. This is a little different from the bartender. He's got sort of the same face, but a little different haircut. And he just drinks. It's not working, but if he was working, he'd throw this cocktail back and smoke would come out of his eyes and they'd spin around. And uh, yes, hard to find a working order, but cool looking regardless. I love old barware. $50 for this set. Permahues, which is a different company than we usually see. We usually see Bascal or West Bend but several companies made these back in the day. Westmoreland Compote in a wonderful blue opaline color. But this is fun, yeah, you could just sort of hang out in this place. Loving the orange phone, hard color to find, 125 on that, $80 each on the red, 
and 125 on the pink. Now, when I was just in Lander Street Marketplace in Seattle, the phone dealer there who makes a market in these had nothing in color because the colored ones are so popular now he can't keep them in stock. Now, the vendors at this are mainly antique and vintage, but there are some repurposers too. And this guy is a fabricator and does a lot of cool stuff with horseshoes, which is appropriate for the area we're in. Look at that great chandelier. This fellow makes wooden games and crafts, and I see the little cornhole boards. Film splicer here. It's funny, all the dealers are saying, oh, you should have come at the beginning. We sold a lot of our good stuff, which is probably true, but there still are some interesting fun things to see here. Esquire did a lot of these things that were sort of kid-oriented to try to get you more interested in keeping your shoes polished. That didn't work on me. But there are some neat, uh, including Disney-related stuff. And this is $5 for each box. This is one of these things where there's just a lot of fun things and you could find something that might be a collectible for you or look good in the kitchen on a shelf or use in the garden. These actually typically sell for a lot more than $5 now in working order. Cute color on that typewriter. I like the old brake fluid canister if I had a shop and was doing old stuff in a display there, I would want that. Well, we are down to the very end. It's an unfortunate side effect of my job that I get to see all this cool stuff, but I don't always get to see it at the very beginning. It has been a fun appraisal fair day. I will have a video about the appraisals. That'll be coming soon, but meanwhile I'm driving through Bill and Bees. This place has been here in Centralia since the 62 Seattle World's Fair. It opened just in time, and I'm just in time for dinner, so I'll see you soon. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video, and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.